Hello, it's Hiski speaking and today we are again going to look a little bit at the follow-up care that you need to do for a patient that have sustained a burn, that have healed uh, over the period of time that you have treated it. Once that wound is completely healed with an epithelial layer over that, it is very important to remember that tensile strength is only about a fraction of what it's supposed to be and you will still need to protect that for about seven days more after the burn has healed to prevent any friction on that that will give you a, a blister again or any trauma on that that may uh, lead to blood blisters within that scar tissue. So we want to keep it as quiet as possible. So if you are going closer towards the wound, you will see that I have put uh, just an ordinary gauze compress on this because there were still some residual burnt skin in this um, surrounding the wound bed here. I want to remove it but I want to do it as atraumatic as possible so by softening up these edges and then just softly moving it away from the skin you can start to roll it away and remove it. You can use a caret as well if you want to do that but the aim is here to have the least amount of trauma possible. So this will be similar to what will be after a severe sunburn. If we leave the senescent skin on the edges it may cause irritation, it may dry out and it will be a huge temptation for patients to start to poke and pick on their wounds by themselves. So by removing that, you do that in a very controlled manner, in a controlled environment. And the patient is safe with this. Try to get as much as you can away. This patient has burned with oil, so it was an oil splatter. And uh, with oil, you always suspect a deeper wound uh, with, a deeper, with a deeper surface that is burned. So he was actually very lucky. And we are now on the 10th day post burn. The dressing that was removed from here was a silver alternate. And uh, the aim on that was to keep this wound bed in a very, very stable uh, condition and to just have um, no um, trauma on it whilst the alternate have changed a little bit of the pH of this wound bed and it served as an automatic infection control. You will see there's very good epithelial layer here. This one is having a minute layer of epithelium over it. If we just leave it like this, it will cross over, patient will start to pick on that and the risk for infection here is very high. So my quick tip on this one is remove all senescence that you can and put a silicone based dressing on top of this, leave this for seven days and the patient can remove it then by himself afterwards. No need for a return consultation and the aim is to get that epithelium as strong as that. <laughs> so the, the, the aim here is to have a silicone dressing that will have enough <coughs> edge protection as well and uh, so I am not here to tell you about which exact dressing to use my aim was I want something that will give a little bit of protection. I want to have an atraumatic layer on the base to make sure that no drama will come. And then I want the patient to be comfortable with this and able to remove it by himself afterwards without having any trauma to the screen here. And you will see I am not putting anything else on this wound 
apart from the soak uh, that was on it and that was it because we don't want this we want this to be in a moist environment not too wet not too dry this one will take all wetness extra away and the silica in it will just make sure that we have a nice and equal distribution of the epithelium over this way. So here we go. And a key tip here is less is always more. Make sure that you apply it very smooth on the edges because any creases in here makes it more difficult for the patient to deal with water and must abstain from a shower where if you have done a very good job on this and have made sure there's no creases when you apply this, this patient is having a better chance to have a good shower and for this to remain intact for seven days. I hope this will help you in your day-to-day -day practice.